Despite the fact that we experience emotions every single day, as people we are very ignorant about emotions. And it of course does not help that the fields of science, medicine, and psychology are still in the dark ages about emotions. As a result of this, we don't deal with emotions correctly when they arise. Today I'm going to offer you a process for correctly dealing with your emotions, a process which will prevent emotions associated with traumatic felt experiences from getting stuck in your body and, thus, from becoming triggers. And a process which will help you to release emotions and traumas from your body and being. When it comes to emotions, we do things like ignore, suppress, deny, reject, fix, turn against, try to control, minimize, distract ourselves from, disguise, dissociate from, numb out, and violently act out our emotions. There are so many different ways that we do these things and there are so many different ways that this harms us and harms the people, places, and things around us. But one of the ways that it harms us is that it causes emotions and traumas to become stuck in our body and stuck in our being. You can think of it metaphorically like this. When we do not fully go through the way we feel and allow the emotions to pass fully through us, gaining the valuable information that is contained in our emotions, and believe me, emotions carry lots of information, that emotional sensation, that emotional content, and that emotional information is stored in packages in the body and being until we release it. Our traumas become trapped within us in this way. It may be interesting for you to know that one of the reasons that people start suppressing emotion is because emotion carries truths and they don't want to see those truths that are painful to acknowledge about themselves or about other people or about life. For this not to happen, we have to let emotions fully pass through our being when they occur instead of resisting them. And when we go through something that is traumatizing, or that stirs up strong negative emotion, we need to place our attention on it so as to give it our full presence. We need to fully experience it. We need to let it pass fully through our body and energy field. We need to learn the information contained in it. Doing so will increase our capacity to feel, as well as our capacity to process those emotions or those things that we feel. It's like building emotional muscle. And this, in turn, will make it so that we feel we can deal with anything life throws our way, rather than spending every day in panic because down deep, we feel like we can't handle painful things happening because we can't handle the emotions that those things will cause us to feel. People fear that when you focus on an emotion, it will simply amplify. It won't ever go away. In fact, it just gets bigger and may even kill them. This represents a huge amount of disempowerment that people feel relative to their own emotions, and this is not true at all when it comes to emotions. First of all, it's important to understand that emotions are very fluid. They move through you if you let them. They're changeable. They change and change and change and change and flow, right? On top of this, your truth, and therefore your emotions, don't just disappear by focusing on something else. The picture of what causes emotions is more complicated than just what you are focused on in the present moment. And most people use these tools designed to avoid negative emotion as a tool of resistance to their emotions. So what happens? Their emotions become stuck in their being. Their emotions get sequestered into the subconscious. They start to see their own emotions as the enemy. Your emotions are not against you. They are powerfully for you, in fact. Emotions are feedback about what is happening in any given circumstance. When you pay attention to your emotions, you are listening and responding to this feedback. It's like listening to radar in a submarine. Also, emotions speak and they want to be listened to. When you bring your presence to emotions, you bring the frequency of presence to the frequency of whatever emotion you are focused on. This changes the overall frequency and you listen to the emotions. By doing so, you are meeting the need of the emotion and therefore you will register an improvement in your own system when you do this. It is profound self-care. Let's use another metaphor. I want you to think of a baby. A baby isn't thinking its way out of an emotion that it is feeling. They're purely with their emotions. There's a truth behind that emotion, of course, such as, I'm afraid, this is a no for me, or I feel lonely, I want togetherness, or I feel insecure, I need reassurance, or my tummy hurts, I'm uncomfortable. Maybe even I feel powerless to do anything about it. <laughs> okay, if a baby has an emotion for some reason, and adults are no different. 
Just like when you're caretaking a baby and in order to do the right thing, you need to listen to your emotions. You need to notice them. You need to feel them. You need to hear them. You need to respond to them. Arguing that if you focus on a negative emotion, all you get is more stuff that matches that negative emotion. <laughs> this is like arguing that if you focus on a baby's discomfort, all that will happen is that they will get more uncomfortable. When you resist an emotion, that is when an emotion amplifies. Without further ado, let's just jump into the process. When emotional pain arises, sit or lie somewhere comfortable where you're not going to be distracted. Then you want to close your eyes and you want to place all of your attention on the sensations that are occurring wherever they might be occurring in your body. For example, you might feel buzzing or extreme constriction or heaviness or aching or hot flashes or cold emptiness, etc. You might feel it in your heart area or in your lower back or in your head and jaws or radiating down your arms or consuming your entire body. Your intent is to experience the emotional experience fully, to feel, hear, see, and understand it completely. Therefore, you are not going to do anything with the sensations that you are feeling and observing. You are not going to fight them. You are not going to try to fix them. You're not going to try to soothe them or anything else. Pay very slow and very deep attention to them. And as an anchor for keeping yourself with your emotions, you're going to keep asking yourself, how does this feel? Or what does that feel like? If your mind gives you an answer like, it feels empty, then you're going to mentally ask yourself, what does empty feel like? <laughs> or if your mind throws up a metaphor like, it feels like mud, you're going to mentally ask yourself, what does mud feel like? The reason you do this is so that the mind stays with the feeling rather than pulling you out and away from the feeling by telling stories about the feeling. If your mind is hijacking the process, what it's going to feel like is that the content of your mind is pulling you out and away from the emotion, causing the intensity of the emotion to dissipate. As you are fully present with observing and feeling the emotional experience occurring within you, you are likely to get images, sounds, insights, maybe even tastes, potentially even memories as well. Remember how I said that these emotional experiences and the information they contain are stored inside the body, like little trauma packages. These images, sounds, insights, and memories, etc., are inside of these packages, so when you place your attention on them fully, and willingly experience the totality of what is inside of them, these things stored inside these packages release and they float up to your conscious awareness. They simply appear in your awareness. For example, you may see a specific color where the emotion is in your chest, or you might see swirls of specific colors consuming your whole body. These colors might come with patterns, they might come with textures. You may get the image of a substance like sand or mud, or an object, or a food, or a person's face, or a place. You may hear someone's voice, or the sound of wind, or screaming. You may suddenly be able to taste a certain flavor in your mouth. You may instantly feel like you are inside of a memory of yours, like a whole scene has come up for replay. You might hear an insight such as, ah, this is why I have such intense issues trusting people, or experience a deep knowing, like, I need to choose to let go of people who don't put any effort or energy into the relationship with me. Again, you're not going to fight them or fix them or soothe them or anything else. What you're going to do is observe them, fully feel them, pay very slow and very deep attention to them. When any of the content of the emotional experience that you were focused on comes up, you're going to continue to feel the emotion. Just like when you watch a movie. The colors and the textures and the images and the insights and memories are there to enhance the experience and add to the experience, not to take you out and away from it. Which is why you want to keep using your anchor question of, what does that feel like? And be willing to be present for a very slow, time-consuming process, rather than rush the process. This process, by the way, does tend to get faster over time. By fully experiencing an emotion or an emotional package that is stuck in the body, by letting it completely consume your body and being, you are giving it space to move. And as you do, it will move and it will change. For example, the color black might start changing to the color blue, and this might coincide with a change from the feeling of an aching, charged, stuck hatred to something like a cold, sinking, sore sadness. The images might move and change. 
For example, from the image of a rainstorm to the image of sitting in your living room as a child all alone in a silent house. What is important is that you are not doing any of these things. You're not doing these changes. Instead, they are happening to you and you're just experiencing them as a result of being totally unconditionally present to fully experience them. Some of these emotions need much more presence than others. Some move and change very quickly, whereas others hold for a long time exactly as they are, causing you to worry if they're ever going to change or ever going to end. This should simply show you how resistant you are to experiencing that specific feeling and how conditional you are with yourself. Because the message that you're essentially sending yourself when you think things like this or when you go into resistance like this is, I'll be with you so that you go away. Essentially, as a part of this process, you are likely to experience your own resistance to feeling emotions or to a specific emotional experience. And you will experience your own resistance the same way that you do any other part of this process with sensations and images and sounds, etc. You're going to keep using your anchor even on the way the resistance itself feels. What does that feel like? Now let's go one step deeper because I'm going to give you another analogy to spin off of the last one, which is going to help you immensely as you go through this process and when you experience any emotion. Imagine that inside every emotional package was a singing bowl. And imagine that the specific feeling you experience when you experience that specific package is the unique tone of that specific singing bowl. Some are far more unpleasant than others. When you place your attention on the way you feel or when something happens in your life to trigger a specific emotional package, it is like that specific singing bowl was struck, bong, and it needs to sing through your entire body and being. It needs to be able to vibrate out completely to the point where it no longer vibrates, just like a singing bowl. This is true if you feel any emotion. It's smart to address any emotion as if it is a singing bowl that has been struck and that needs to sing itself out in order to dematerialize. But if you have a trigger, what has happened is that when the painful experience originally occurred, that singing bowl was not allowed to sing. It was suppressed. It stayed stuck and unplayed in the being. And you have most likely spent your whole life trying to shut down its singing. Should it ever get touched by something you experience in the world? More than that, you've most likely spent your whole life trying to avoid anything that might cause that package with that singing bowl to be touched. For so many of us, our entire lives are spent in a perpetual state of avoidance. Our life is nothing more than us trying to avoid feeling certain ways. And this is no way to live. When you are doing this process and you feel the emotion, like a feeling tone in your body, remind yourself to let it sing through your whole being, like a singing bowl that has just been struck. It is here that you have options. Because it is so important to fully experience our emotions and to be present with yourself in that way, to build up the emotional muscle to do so, you might actually choose to do this in increments. Metaphorically speaking, you might choose to dip a toe into this process first, and then an ankle, and then a leg. If you do this, you're going to do this process until you feel a slight release, maybe like a, let's say, 10 to 20% reduction in tension within your body. The reason for this tension release is that your own being registers your presence. It's a soothing force because you are indicating that you are changing your pattern of self-abandonment. If you do it this way, you're going to just simply increase your presence from there. Maybe the next time you will do it until an emotion you experience moves and changes to a totally different emotion and you experience that new emotion for a time. When you do this process that way, just make sure that you exit the process by giving yourself some reassuring messages. Messages that are the opposite of self-abandonment, such as saying to the specific emotion that you are processing, you can stay with me as we go through the day. Or affirming to yourself, I will not leave myself here like this. I am coming back to this on Saturday. Or by internally explaining to yourself why you are choosing to stop there and then caringly addressing and resolving any fears that you may feel crop up within yourself in response to that. You ready for the master's class? The other option is to go all the way through. When you go all the way through an emotion, you are with it unconditionally and completely as it changes and changes and changes until the improvement happens on its own and to you. 
you're simply experiencing the improvement as it naturally occurs. For example, this might look like palpable relief, or it might look like a sense of deep groundedness, or it might look like experiencing the exact opposite of the original pain. Like I said, this is the master's class of emotional experiencing, and depending on the specific emotional experience that you are experiencing, it can take a really long time. When you do this, you are likely to experience a turning point. For example, you may have been triggered by someone devaluing you, and you might be sitting in a part of the process with an excruciating white-hot pain, and it may consume your whole body. You might get images of your body falling apart, being dissolved by that white-hot pain, only to suddenly start experiencing your body coming back together again, and that white-hot pain turning to a technicolor tapestry, and the feeling changing from excruciating pain to a kind of solidness and strength and fullness, and suddenly receiving insights like, Everything in the universe is inside of you, so it's impossible not to have value. And you will get to a point where intuitively it feels like you have reached completion with that specific package and with that specific singing bowl. You may also choose to do anything in between these two options. I want you to remember that we are building emotional muscle. So that you can understand this process better, I'm going to give you an example. So let's start with Jackson. Jackson received a rejection letter from a college that he was desperate to get into. So he got a towel, he laid it down on the floor so he could lie down on it. He closed his eyes and turned all of his attention towards the sensations. He noticed first and foremost a tightness in his throat and a sharp, gripping, pulsing, throbbing pain in his chest. He spent around 25 minutes just feeling that sensation, letting it spread out across his whole body. Whenever he felt his mind trying to go elsewhere, he just asked himself, what does this feel like, and reattuned to the sensations. At first, he saw flashes of red associated with the sensation, but soon that red turned to an experience of white light, and when it did, he felt like he was up against an immovable stone wall. He felt desperation. When he asked himself, what does desperation feel like? It was things like frantic, static, a crushing, sinking feeling, and an aching so deep in the heart that the ache itself felt like it was screaming. An insight popped into his awareness. I feel powerless. Powerless to get the people in charge of admission to decide to admit me, like there is nothing I can do or will ever be able to do. He felt a tiny breeze of relief when he was on top of the actual pain. The perception of utter powerlessness. He asked himself, what does that feel like? Meaning the powerlessness. He focused fully on the sensation. Breathlessness, stuckness, the aching in his chest, the wobbliness in his limbs. He watched it and felt it and listened to see if it had any sounds for what felt like a long time before the image of a big red rubber ball took over his entire vision. He didn't understand it. The image felt intrusive. But he let himself feel intruded upon. He let the big red ball intrude on him and asked himself, what does this ball feel like? The sensations he felt of powerlessness simply amplified. They intensified. The image of the ball and the powerlessness stayed as is. He felt himself go into resistance to it. The thought, oh my god, this is never going to end, came up. So he felt the powerlessness and also the resistance he was feeling to the experience of that powerlessness. He allowed the feeling of himself pushing against what is happening and clenching against it to take over his body, as if he was totally surrendering, to fully feeling that internal fight between the experience and his resistance to the experience. He heard his own internal voice pipe up and say, okay then, let it never end then. This caused a relaxation in his body. Then Jackson saw a memory of being in his middle school gymnasium. The smell of the place was so real. It was as if he was there again. And he asked himself, what does this feel like? <laughs> Extreme frustration in the form of constriction and heat and this rushing and electric currents that are coursing through his being with bright red again. For a time, it was like he was stuck in the memory while at the same time feeling engulfed by a red, red fire. He was totally with it. He let his whole body feel it. And eventually that red turned into a white light, similar to in the beginning of the process. 
and the memory of him not being chosen for a dodgeball team that he was desperate to join on account of a group of older boys popped up. Jackson experienced the memory as if what was happening emotionally at that time were happening to him right here and now. He let the breathlessness, the stuckness, the aching in his chest spread all through his body. The white light intensified and intensified. He had been fully with the process for over an hour at this point. He thought about the singing bowl analogy, that it needs to sing. And this helped him to let that feeling experience completely ring through his entire body for as long as it needed to. Then he felt himself stop fighting against the boys in the memory. It just happened. He felt himself give up as if he just couldn't fight anymore. This felt like relief. The white light disappeared and turned into a dark blue, a heavy, sinking sadness. He saw the image of himself lying on his side on the gym floor and the lights in the gymnasium being turned off. And a knowing popped into his awareness that he needed to accept the rejection and to accept he was not going to keep trying to change it. Tiredness took over his entire body, a palpable fatigue, but he was surprised by how relieving that felt. Not good, just much better than the powerlessness and the fight to try to be accepted. He fully surrendered to the feeling of that letdown and to the smell of the gymnasium floor because that is what was happening in terms of felt-based experience in that moment. Soon the image of the gymnasium faded on its own. He was just completely in and of that blue tiredness and sinking. That sensation and experience stayed for quite some time before he smelled coffee. Despite there being no coffee in his house. So he breathed that smell in, fully feeling it. He asked himself, what does coffee feel like? <laughs> Three times he asked himself this. And he felt the feeling of that sadness while also being willing to feel the coffee that had appeared in his senses simultaneously. He started to feel some warm, cozy lightness in his underarms and down the sides of his ribcage, and he put his attention on that. He took deep breaths to better feel it, and it expanded and expanded until he was seeing swirls of blue and swirls of yellow and the texture of smooth candy. An image flashed and then disappeared. The image was of him sitting at a coffee shop with one of his friends, Maggie. He didn't chase the image. He didn't try to understand it. He just kept feeling what was there. The swirls of blue and yellow. The sadness mixed with the warm coziness. And after about 15 minutes of the feeling being allowed to just completely play out and sing within him, he had a huge insight come to his awareness. I don't try to get accepted by Maggie. I can just sit there at coffee with her and feel this incredible relief because I can just be me. Then he realizes, bam. Oh my gosh, I associate coffee with acceptance. <laughs> I don't need to be part of the cool club to have what I want. Oh God, what if this is the real reason I'm trying to go to Stanford? That's bullshit. Jackson felt himself being sucked into this awareness away from how he felt. So he placed his attention back on the feeling sensation that was occurring in his body exactly at that minute. The swirls of blue had gone away. All that was there was the feeling of solidness, almost groundedness, and a sharp, warm, opening kind of feeling. He invited that feeling and also the awareness he had gained into his entire being so that it took over his entire being. He saw flashes of his friend Maggie and they intensified this feeling. He loved that feeling. He let it seep into every fiber of his being until he felt this intuitive feeling that it was enough for that time. He checked in internally to feel for if opening his eyes and going about his day would be okay for all of him. And he felt an internal yes. So he took three deep breaths and thanked the feeling in his body, got up, drank a full glass of water, and went about the rest of his day. This process is as close to a medicine journey as you will get without actually taking shamanic medicines. Like shamanic medicine journey work, it is simply a process that happens to you and you are simply experiencing it. You are going along for the ride rather than proactively doing anything to bring it about. You are experiencing. You may feel exhausted after you do this process. It's just a little warning. That's totally normal. Building emotional muscle can be tiring at first. On top of this, it is exhausting to keep emotions stored in the being and to live your life trying to avoid them being triggered. 
also exhausting being stuck in fight or flight mode, which so many of us are when we're stuck in our triggers. So there's often a huge exhaustion to be experienced when you stop doing all of this. You can do this process with what you might judge as positive feel-good emotions too. It's not like you're limited to doing this only with what you would judge as negative, uncomfortable, and painful emotions. It's just that those are the ones that we tend to resist rather than let ourselves fully experience. And so those tend to be the ones that become stuck within the being and serving as triggers more often than others. Another powerful element of this process is that it deactivates the nervous system. Remember how I was talking about being stuck in fight or flight mode? Often when triggers are activated, you will register threat or danger. But when you do this process, you're directing your attention inwards. And this in fact signals to the nervous system that you're not in danger. Why? Because if you were, you would be focused externally. <laughs> okay, so based on the fact that you are focused internally, your being registers this and goes, oh, we're not actually that unsafe. Now this not only calms you down, it also allows the vulnerable emotions to come through, past those protective elements of being that might be suppressing that emotion. Having become aware of the information carried by the emotions, you can then make better decisions and take better actions in your day-to-day -day life. Using our previous example, Jackson's experience caused him to release the trauma of rejection he suffered as a middle school student and caused him to become aware of how much his life is ruled by the desperation to not feel rejected and therefore the desperation to be part of the cool crowd. He decided this is not a good enough reason for him to go to an Ivy League college. So what did he do? He decided to prioritize applying to a college that was near Maggie and near the people who have never treated him like he needs accolades for them to want to spend time with him. By using this process, you can move through painful experiences that happen in your life and let the emotions that arise move through you rather than accumulating trauma that prevents you from truly living. So all that's left is to give it a try. Have a good week.